job to get it on tape. It looked like a big cigarette and it was flying across the sky. It looked like four balls that was connected. The third ball to the end was red. The last ball white, 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 red. I think it either could be extraterrestrial or some type of new animal. I'm just a hunter. We don't want to hear about it. We want to see it. Whether UFOs turn out to be majestic light sculptures, unknown craft above major cities, or possible military vehicles, there's no doubt that mysterious things are being captured in the skies over America. Maybe with more and more video evidence being studied, answers to the UFO riddle will start to emerge. Coming up next, is this the biggest UFO ever caught on tape? This UFO here, I measured approximately two to three miles in diameter against the 12 mile length of the tether. And later, is this video of a captured alien too good to be true? The thing about the footage and the, the thing that grabs people is that after you look at it, it has this kind of creepy quality that tends to get to people and it tends to kind of hook them. When UFOs, the best evidence ever caught on tape too, return. While UFOs have been caught on tape all over America, UFO researchers have wondered for years what NASA cameras may have managed to capture in outer space. Franklin, uh, we see a long line. Amazingly, these shocking video sequences shown here for the first time on television might prove once and for all that NASA knows UFOs are navigating just above the Earth and dangerously close to our space shuttle missions. When I saw the tape, I realized that I was looking at very exciting, incredible footage that has never before been seen by the public. David Sarita, a former Defense Department subcontractor, has been studying NASA's possible interest in UFOs for over 15 years. And he believes this incident, which has since become legendary on the Internet as the Tether incident, may prove UFOs are real. February 25th, 1996. 100 miles above Africa, an experimental satellite system attached to a 12-mile-long electricity-conducting tether suddenly breaks. Within moments, the satellite drifts almost 100 miles away. Nitrogen gas gathers around the tether, effectively turning it into a gigantic fluorescent light in space. Incredibly, it seems to attract some strange company. You see a swarm of what may be UFOs flying around it. And then we see the camera zoom in on these objects, and we see giant disks passing behind this tether. But the astronauts involved in the mission seem to have a more mundane explanation. It's a little bit of debris that uh, kind of flies with us. But is it simply debris, as is often claimed by NASA when looking at alleged UFOs in space? Watch what happens when the cameras zoom in. What we're seeing on the screen here appears very small, but if you blew this up, you would see that these objects are enormous in size. This UFO here, I measured approximately two to three miles in diameter against the 12 mile length of the tether. If it's further behind the tether than I think, it could be much larger. The potential size of these UFOs is clearly mind boggling. And according to Sarita, so is the advanced technology behind them. Would a piece of space junk pulsate in a regular pattern as we see here? This spiral to me suggests a gravity wave that is stronger than light. This to me is proof in quantum physics that these UFOs are utilizing very advanced forms of gravity energy and zero-point energy. Sarita believes that our space program does not yet possess this technology, nor the capability to perform the startling maneuvers displayed by these UFOs caught on tape during another shuttle mission. Look over here, you're going to see something that a meteorite cannot do. You're going to see a high-speed angular turn, and the object continues. The G-forces on a turn like this would flatten any astronaut into a pancake. Could all these objects be written off as mere space debris, as NASA contends? If that's so, then how can they explain this eye-opening footage of UFOs forming above the Earth? As these UFOs reach their positions in the circle, they light up, showing incredible intelligence. There we see a UFO light up right in the middle of the circle. This shows intelligence. 
Whatever the UFOs videotaped by NASA cameras are, there's no doubt that back down on Earth, they continue to be filmed over every major country around the globe. February 3rd, 1995. During the early morning hours, a woman tapes this mysterious craft hovering above Beijing, China. Notice how the glowing object floats, making no sharp turns or sudden maneuvers. While some dismiss the craft as a blimp, airline pilot and UFO researcher Jim Courant is not so sure. I'm quite aware of what a blimp looks like, and these advertising blimps are in many areas around the world. And I have checked with the blimp company that supplies many of the uh, advertising blimps. We also did a, a check with the, the control tower, the radar, military, and civilian over there, and there were no registered aircraft in the area at that time, blimp or otherwise. So I'm not quite sure what it is. The UFO. May 29, 1993, Stuttgart, Germany. Halfway around the world, then 15-year-old Kai Metzger recorded a craft remarkably similar to the one seen over Beijing, China. I saw this thing and uh, I thought, oh my God, what's that? And because of that, I, I took my camera and, and shoot it and I was really afraid of it. What are we to make of these unusual looking craft videotaped in the skies above China and Germany? Are they blimps? or something much more inexplicable. Dr. Bruce McAbee believes he has the answer. We have studied a number of videos with this sort of an image and in some cases have been able to absolutely prove that this is an image of a blimp which has lights on the inside, a transparent skin. This shape right here matches very closely or perhaps exactly with the known shapes of internally lighted blimps. Derby, England, March 13, 1995. This unidentified flying object was caught on tape for nearly an hour. The strangely shaped object was described as being completely silent. A few years later, in August 1998, a large metallic object was caught on tape again in England, this time in the village of Silbury Hill, an area famous for UFO sightings. The noiseless craft was said to hover in the sky for two to three minutes before disappearing, and then it returned then blinked out. During a five-month-long wave of UFO sightings in Peru in February 1999, two photographers captured the same imposing object on the very same evening just outside Lima. Next night, this mysterious craft was caught on tape again for a full 40 minutes as it hovered above the nearby town of Pueblo Libre. Look at this red glow on the object's underside. Later, three distinct white lights appear on top. Jim Courant finds the images baffling. You have something that was so strange that uh, anybody seeing it uh, would have to say, I can't explain it. May 15th, 1996, Quito, Ecuador. A round object was spotted in the night sky. Again, the craft exhibited an elaborate array of lights. No known man-made object or aircraft looks like this. December 3, 1994, Monterrey, Mexico. What you are seeing is perhaps the most compelling nighttime UFO video ever caught on tape in that region. A respected UFO researcher, Santiago Itoria, shot the tape. From the mountain emerged this huge, red glowing, very bright object. So I began filming and uh, we realized that it was indeed a UFO, uh, a triangular shape, red glowing, UFO, very silent, and it was very low altitude. Here, as Ituria zooms in with his camera, focusing on its mysterious red glow. We took two days reviewing the video, making analysis on the computer, and we discovered that uh, this UFO has this kind of energy all around. Can there be any simple explanations for the strange objects continuously being recorded around the globe and even above it? UFO investigators remain perplexed. Interestingly, some don't see it as a threat, but as a blessing. Don't know what they are, where do they come from, what do they want, but we are convinced that this presence is positive to our lives. Coming up is a Mexico UFO wave leading people to believe that aliens are landing. So when the, he meet the occupants, he say that they were beings of light kind of a spiritual extraterrestrial. And later is Israel. 